Hello everyone and welcome to video 135. This is Noah and Bill. Today we are reading Ricky Ricky Tabby by Rudyard Kipling. You ready? Sorry, it's really hard to breathe today, so bear with me. Ricky Tiki Tabby. This is the story of the great war that Ricky Tiki Tabby fought all by himself through the English family's house in India. Ricky Tiki Tabby was a mongoose with fur and a tail like a cat's and a head like a weasel's. One day, a summer flood washed him out of the burrow where he lived with his father and mother and floated him kicking and clucking down a roadside ditch. He found a stick floating near him, and he held onto it until he fainted. When he revived, he was lying in the middle of a garden path, very wet indeed, and a little boy was saying, Here's a dead mongoose. Let's have a funeral. No, said his mother. Let's take him in and dry him. Perhaps he isn't really dead. They took him into the house where a big man picked it picked him up and said he wasn't dead, just tired. So they wrapped him in cotton and warmed him over a little fire, and he opened his eyes and sneezed. Now, said the big man, who is the boy's father? Don't frighten him, and we'll see what he'll do. It is the hardest thing in the world to frighten a mongoose, because he is full of curiosity from nose to tail. The motto of the mongoose family is, go and find it. And Ricky Ticky was a true mongoose. He looked at the cotton, decided it wasn't good to eat, ran all around the table, sat up, scratched himself, and jumped on the boy's shoulder. Don't be frightened, Teddy, said his father. That's his way of making friends. He tickles, said Te Teddy. Ricky Ticky snuffled at the boy's ear and climbed down to the floor where he sat rubbing his nose. Is he so tame because he helped him? Asked Teddy's mother. All mongooses are like that, said the husband. If Teddy doesn't pick him up by the tail, he'll, he'll run in and out of the house all day long. Let's give him something to eat. They give him a little piece of raw meat, which Ricky Ticky liked immensely. There are more things to find out about in this house, he said to himself, than all my family could find out in all of their lives. I shall s certainly stay and find out. He spent the day roaming around the house. He nearly drowned in the bathtub, put his nose in the ink on a desk, and burned it on the end of the big man's cigar. When Teddy went to bed, Ricky Ticky climbed up too. Teddy's mother and father came in before they went to bed. And Ricky Ticky was awake on the pillow. I don't like this, said Teddy's mother. He might bite. He won't, said the father. Teddy's safer with a little animal than with a watchdog. If a snake came into his room. But Teddy's mother wouldn't think of anything so awful. Early in the morning, Ricky Ticky came to the breakfast on the porch, riding on Teddy's shoulders. And they gave him banana and some boiled egg. And he ran. Or he, and he sat on all their laps, one after the other. Then Ricky Ticky went out into the backyard to see what was to be seen. It was a large yard with rose bushes, as big as houses, lime and orange trees, and clumps of bad boots. Ricky Ticky scuttled up and down the garden, snuffled here and there, until he heard very sad voices in a thorn bush. It was Darzee, the tailor bird, and his wife. They had made a beautiful nest by putting, pulling two big leaves together and stitching up the edges and had filled the inside with fluff. What's the matter? asked Ricky Ticky. We are miserable, said Darcy. One of our babies fell out of the nest yesterday and Nag ate him. Hmm, said Ricky Ticky. This is very sad, but I am a stranger here. Who is Nag? Darcy and his wife cowered down in the nest without answering. For from the thick grass at the foot of the bush, there came a low hiss, a horrid, cold sound. And inch by inch out of the grass rose up the head of Nag, the big cobra. And he was five feet long, from tongue to tail. When he had lifted one-third of himself clear off the ground, 
He swayed like a dandelion tuft in the wind, and he looked at Ricky Ticky with the wicked snake eyes that never changed their expression, whatever the snake may be thinking. Who is Nag? He said. I am Nag. Look and be afraid. What? Is that another book? Alright. Ricky Ticky was afraid for a minute. But it is impossible for a mongoose to stay frightened for very long. Ricky Ticky had never met a live cobra before. But his mother had fed him on dead ones, and he knew that a mongoose's job is to fight and eat snakes. Nag knew that too, and at the bottom of his cold heart, he was afraid. Well, said Ricky Ticky, I'm looking, but do you think it is right for you to eat baby birds? Nag was watching for moments in the grass behind Ricky Ticky. He knew that mongooses in the garden meant death sooner or later for him and his family. He dropped his head a little and said, Let's talk. You eat eggs? Why should I eat birds? Behind you. Look behind you, said Darcy. Ricky Ticky jumped up in the air as high as he could go, and just under him was by the head of Nagina, Nag's wicked wife. She had crept up behind him as he was talking to kill him, and he heard her hiss as the stroke missed. He came down almost across her back and bit, but he did not bite long enough, and he jumped away from the whisking t tail, leaving Nagina torn and angry. Wicked, wicked Darcy, said Nag, lashing up as high as he could reach towards the nest, but Darcy had built it out of reach of snakes. Ricky Ticky felt his eyes getting hot and angry, and he sat back on his tail and hind legs like a little kangaroo and chattered with rage. But Nag and Nagina had disappeared in the grass. Ricky Ticky did not follow them, for he did not feel sure he could manage two snakes at once. So he trotted off to the gravel path near the house and sat down. Ricky Ticky was just a young mongoose, and he was very pleased that he had managed to escape an attack from behind. When Teddy came running down the path, Ricky Ticky was ready to be petted. But just as Teddy was leaning down, something squirmed in the dust, and Tiny Boy said, Be careful, I am death. It was Karate, the little brown snakeling <laughs> that lies on the dusty ground in India, and whose bite is as dangerous as the cobra's. <laughs> Ricky Ticky's eyes grew angry again, and he danced up to Karate with the strange rocking, swaying motion that he had inherited from his family. It looks very funny but it is so perfectly balanced that the that he could fly off in any direction he wanted. And in dealing with snakes, this is an advantage. He rocked back and forth, looking for a good place to hold. Crate struck. Ricky's jumped sideways, and the wicked little dusty head lashed right near his shoulder. Teddy shouted to the house, Come look, our mongoose is killing a snake. And Ricky Ticky heard a scream from Teddy's mother. His father ran out with a stick. By the time he came up, Ricky Ticky had sprung jumped on the snake's back, bitten as high up as they could, and rolled away. That bite paralyzed Karate, and Ricky Ticky was just going to eat him up from the tail to the head after the custom of his family when he remembered that a big meal makes a slow mongoose. He went away from the dust bath under the bushes while Teddy's father beat the dead snake. What's the use of that, thought Ricky Ticky. I've already settled it all. Then Teddy's mother picked him up and hugged him saying that he had saved Teddy's life. Ricky Ticky did not understand the fuss. Teddy's mother might just as well have hugged Teddy for playing in the mud. Ricky was thoroughly enjoying himself. That night at dinner, walking among the glasses on the table, he could have stuffed himself with good things, but he did not. Though it was very pleasant to be petted, he remembered Nag and Nagina, and from time to time he would give his war cry of Rick Ticky. Rick Tick Tickety Tee Teddy carried him to bed and insisted that Ricky Ticky sleep under his chin. But as soon as Teddy was asleep, he went for his nightly walk across the house. And in the dark, he ran up against Chuchandra, the muskrat, creeping near the wall. Chuchandra is a scared little beast. He whimpers and cheeps all night, trying to make up his mind to run into the middle of the room. 
but he never gets there. Don't kill me, says Chichenga. Ricky Ticky, don't kill me. Do you think a snake killer kills muskrats? asked Ricky Ticky scornfully. Those who kill snakes get killed by snakes, said Chichenga. And how am I to be sure Nag won't mistake me for some dark night? There's no danger, said Ricky Ticky. Nag is in the garden, and you don't go there. My cousin, the rat, told me, said Shachandra, and then he stopped. Told you what? Hush! Nag is everywhere, Ricky Ticky. Can't you hear? Ricky Ticky listened. The house was still as still as still, but he could just catch a soft scratch, scratch sound, a noise as quiet as the footsteps of a fly on a window pane, the dry scratch of a snake's scales on brick. That's Nag or Nagina, he said, and whoever it is is crawling into the bathroom drain. Thank you, Chichendra. He crept to Teddy's bathroom, but there was nothing there, and then to Teddy's parents' bathroom. At the bottom of the plaster wall, there was a brick pulled out to make a drain for the bathwater, and Ricky Ticky listened. He heard Nag and Nagina whispering together in the moonlight. When the house is emptied of the people, said Nagina, we will, he will go away, and then the garden will be ours again. Go in quietly and remember that the big man who killed Karate is the first one to bite. Then come out, and he will hunt, and we will hunt for Ricky Ticky. But are you sure we must kill the people? asked Nag. Yes. When there were no people in the house, did we have a mongoose in the garden? As long as the house is empty, we are king and queen of the garden. Remember that as soon as our eggs hatch, our children will need room and quiet. I had not thought of that, said Nag. I will go, but there's no need to hunt for Ricky Ticky. I will kill the man and woman and the child if I can. Then the house will be empty and Ricky Ticky will leave. Ricky Ticky tingled all over with rage at this, and then Nag's head came through the drain and his five feet of cold body followed it. Angry as he was, Ricky Ticky was very frightened when he saw the size of the cobra. Nag raised his head and looked into the bathroom, and Ricky could see his eyes glitter in the dark. When Karate was killed, the man had a stick, said the snake. But when he comes to bathe in the morning, he won't have it. I'll wait here till he comes. Nagana, do you hear me? I'll wait here till daytime. There was no answer, so Ricky Ticky knew Nagana had gone away. Nag coiled himself down, coil by coil, around the bottom of the water jar, and was used to fill the bath. Ricky Ticky stayed as still as death. After an hour, he began to move, muscle by muscle, towards the jar. Nag was asleep, and Ricky Ticky looked at him, wondering how to attack. If I don't break his back at the first jump, thought Ricky, he can still fight. And if he fights, oh, Ricky. It must be the head, he decided finally, and I must not let go. Then he jumped. As he bit, Ricky braced his back against the water jar to hold down the snake's head. Then he was battered back and forth as a toy is shaken by a dog. Back and forth, up and down, and around in circles. But he held on as the snake's body whipped across the floor and banged against the side of the bathtub. He closed his jaws tighter and tighter, for he was sure he would be banged to death. And for the honor of his family, he wanted to be found with his teeth locked. He was dizzy, aching, and felt shaken to pieces when something went off like a thunderclap just behind him. And red fire singed his fur. Teddy's father had been wakened by the noise and had fired a shotgun into Nag. Ricky Ticky held on with his eyes shut, for now he was sure he was dead. But the man picked him up and said, It's the mongoose again. The little guy has saved our lives. Now. When morning came, Ricky Ticky was very stiff but well pleased with himself. Now I have Nagina to deal with, and she will be worse than five nags, and they're and there's no knowing when the eggs will hatch. I must go see Darcy, he said. Without waiting for breakfast, Ricky Ticky ran to the thorn bush, where Darcy was singing a song of triumph at the top of his voice. The news of Nag's death was all over the garden, because his body had been put on the garbage heap. Oh, you stupid tuft of feathers, said Ricky Ticky. Is this the time to sing? Nag is dead, 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 sang Darcy. The valiant Ricky Ticky talked caught him by the head and held tight. The big man brought the big stick and Nag broke into two pieces. He will never eat my babies again. You're safe enough in your nest there, said Ricky Ticky, but it's war for me down here. Stop singing a minute, Darcy. For the great Ricky Ticky's sake, I will stop, said Darcy. What is it, O killer of the terrible Nag? 
Where's Nagina? On the garbage heap by the stables, mourning for Nag. Great Ricky Ticky for the of the white teeth. Never mind my white teeth. Do you know where she kept, keeps her eggs? In the Merlin bed, on the end nearest the wall. Where's the sun strikes nearly all day? Ricky Ticky, you're not going to eat her eggs. Not, not eat exactly, no. Darcy, can you fly off to the stables and pretend your wing is broken and let Nagina chase you back to his bush? I must get to the melon bed, and if I weren't there, now she'd see me. Darcy knew that Nagina's children were born in eggs like his own, so he didn't think it was fair to kill them. But his wife was a sensible bird, and she knew that a cobra's egg meant young cobras later on. So she flew from the nest and left Darcy to keep the babies warm. She flew in front of Naginas and cried out, My wing is broken. The boy in the house threw a stone at me and broke it. Nagina lifted up her head and hissed, You've picked a bad place to be laying in. And she moved towards the bird, slipping across the dust. The boy broke it with a stone, said Darcy's wife. Well, it may please you to know that when you're dead, I will still deal with him. Before night, the boy in the house will lie very still. Now what's the use of running away? I'm sure to catch you. But Darcy's wife fluttered on, never leaving the ground, and Nagina slid her faster. Ricky Ticky heard them going up the path, and he raced for the end of the melon patch near the wall. They were very cleverly hidden. He found twenty-five small eggs. I was just in time, he thought, for he could see the baby crows curled up yeah. inside the skin. And he knew that the minute they were hatched, they could each kill a man or a mongoose. He bit off the tops of the eggs as fast as he could, crushing the deadly young snakes. At last, there were only three eggs left. Then he heard Darcy's wife screaming, Ricky Ticky, I led Nagina towards the house and she's, she was going into the, onto the porch. And oh, come quickly, she means killing. Ricky Ticky smashed two eggs and with a third egg in his mouth, scuttled to the porch as fast as he could. Teddy and his mother and father were there at breakfast, but they were not eating anything. They were stone still and their faces were pale. Nagina was coiled up with an easy striking distance of Teddy's bare leg, and she was swaying back and forth, singing a song of triumph. Son of the man who killed Nag, she hissed, stay still. Keep very still, all three of you. If you move, I strike, and if you do not move, I strike. Oh, foolish people, who killed my nag? Teddy's eyes were fixed on his father, but all his father could do was whisper, Sit still, Teddy. Don't move. Sit still. Then Ricky Ticky came up and cried, Turn around, Nagina. Turn and fight. All in good time, she said, without moving her eyes. I'll deal with you later. Look at your friends, Ricky Ticky. They dare not move, and if you come a step Near, I strike. Look at your eggs in the melon patch, said Ricky Ticky. Go and look, Nagina. The snake turned half around and saw the egg. Give it to me, she said. Ricky Ticky held the egg. What price for a snake's egg for a young cobra? For the last, the very last of the brood. The ants are eating all the others down by the melon patch. Nagina spun around forgetting everything for the sake of the one egg, and Ricky Ticky saw Teddy's father grab Teddy by the shoulder and drag him across the table with the teacups out of reach of Nagana. Tricked, 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 Ricky Ticky, called Ricky Ticky. The boy is safe, and it was I, I, I that caught Nag last night in the bathroom. He threw me back and forth, but he could not shake me off. He was dead before the man killed him. I did it, Ricky Ticky Tick. Come, Nagana, come and fight me. Nagana saw she had lost her chance of killing Teddy, and the egg lay between Ricky Ticky's paws. Give me the egg, Ricky Ticky, and I will go away and never come back, she said. Yes, you'll never come back because you'll be dead. Fight, Snake. The man has gone for his gun. Fight. Ricky Ticky was bounding all, all around Nagana, keeping just out of her reach. Nagina gathered herself together and struck out at him. Ricky Ticky jumped up and back. 
Again and again and again, she struck, and each time her head hit with a whack of the batting of the porch. Then Ricky Ticky danced in a circle to get behind her, and then Gina spun around to face him. Ricky Ticky had forgotten the egg. It lay on the porch. Nagata came near and near to it, till at last, while Ricky Ticky was taking a breath, she caught it in her mouth, turned to the steps, and flew down the path with Ricky Ticky behind her. Ricky Ticky knew he must catch her, on, or all the trouble would begin again. She headed straight for the long grass by the thorn bush, and as he was running, Ricky Ticky heard Darcy still singing his song of triumph. But Darcy's wife was smarter. She flew off her nest as Nagina came, came along and flapped her wings at Nagina's head. Nagina only lowered her head and went on, but the instant's, de the instant's delay let N Ricky Ticky catch up to her, and as she plunged into the hole where she and Nag used to live, his little white teeth were clenched on her tail. Ricky Ticky went down with her, and very few mongooses, however wise and old they may be, cared to follow Clover into its hole. It was dark in the hole, and Ricky Ticky never knew when it might widen and give the gate a room to turn and strike at him. When the grass grew by the mouth of the hole, stopped waving. Darcy said, It is all over with Ricky Ticky. We must sing his death song. For Nagina will surely kill him on the ground. So he sang a very mournful song that he had just made up, and right as the saddest part, the grass quivering again, and Ricky Ticky dragged himself out of the hole, leg by leg, licking his whiskers. Ricky Ticky shook some of the dust out of his fur and sneezed. It's all over, he said. The snake would never come out again. And the red ants that lived between the grass stems heard him and began to troop down the hole to see if he had spoken the truth. When Ricky's got to the house, Teddy and Teddy's mother and Teddy's father came out and almost cried over him. And that night he ate everything that was given to him until he could eat no more. He went to bed on Teddy's shoulder, where Teddy's mother saw him when she looked in late at night. He saved our lives, she said to her husband. Just think, he saved all our lives. Ricky Ticky's woke with a jump, for all mongooses are light sleepers. Oh, it's you, he said he. What are you awakened for? All of the cobras are dead, and if they weren't, I'm here. Ricky Ticky had a right to be proud of himself, and he kept the garden as a mongoose should keep it, with tooth and jump and spring and bright, till never a cobra dared show its head inside the walls. That was a good book, huh? That was a good book. That was Ricky Ticky Tabby by Rudyard Kipling. That was a long book, buddy. And you did well sitting there. Oh, we read the whole book. I think that was the longest book we've read in one sitting. So that was awesome, bud. High five. High five. Yeah. I mean, Shel Silverstein's uh, book was longer, but we did that over, I think, three different days. But that was, I think, the longest one we've done in one sitting. So good sitting, buddy. Um, so, hey, guys. Um, I hope uh, your weekend had gone well. Um, yeah, we had some good weather Saturday, played some softball, huh? and then, um, and today we got rained out in softball, so we just had soccer. So, we'll be getting ready for school tomorrow. Yeah, hey, that's cool. Hey, smile, nice. So, thanks guys for keeping, uh, keeping with us. I know this this video is a little long. It's going on 24 minutes now. So we'll leave it at that. So like, share, and subscribe as always. Check out noahsgear.com. And let us know what you think. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later.